Drops. He's looking to get the Candela down blue here to deal with that tricky position. I was to do say about the magnets here as well. We're making use of the EMP above. It should mean that these roll straight on through. And sure enough, one inside of blue. No drop coming in because it's immediate smoke response. But Moto, three are pushing their way through here. Led in the charge by the ace of resets. Found themselves one, but elsewhere traded out. It's another one for one going on between the two teams. One of our slower attacking rounds, but a 3v3 with 40 seconds to go. And that diffuser is going down, Tim. Resets managed to get in behind the boxes here. He's going to secure that. There's no way that Dark Zero could have any impact on it. They're now on the retake. Nerf is down, These and they're all right. pinned back into Arsenal. This really should be an easy win for Liquid because Dark Zero have to cross. They have to move across that corridor, and they've got the line. Palu, we've seen him in this position a million times, led at the bottom of main stairs. He knows every pixel of it. He gets one, he gets two, and that is almost certainly going to secure the round for Liquid. Resets after getting the plant down, finds the final man and Team Liquid come out with a strong attack on Clubhouse and what better start could they ask for? Bolo's in a lot of danger. We've got the Capital on side, let's not forget, who is lethal in pushing in towards this site. In fact, I think Fabian and Fresh are talking about it. Capital might be a worthwhile ban for this map for some teams, but Vaults here really should be the key influencer on how this plays out, but right now he's being challenged on the front door. Doesn't feel like it's safe for him to step across behind the Monty and get the march on through. You know, we've gone two minutes into the round, and have we reverted back to the utility meta? Because this feels like Liquid are attacking into it, despite there being really not that much to slow them down. Yeah, Lagonis' push was really slowed down by a well-placed Goomine up at the there top. or no choice. He gets flamed out up on the top of Catwalk as he drops. It's going to be Volps to pick up the kill onto him. Pamba sends out more Goomines to just try and prevent that push from the Monte into Catwalk. And Lagonis needs to be careful because he could take lethal damage if he's no not aware way. of that. Pamba goes over the top rope, but he can only find one before Reset shuts him down. Reset's continuing to go big here in round two, but time is going to become the issue. The Maestro Cam, the evil eye finish from NJR to take down the shield, leaving us now. Three versus two, 15 seconds left to go. They could just push for oh the kills man. here, Des. NJR second rated in the whole tournament so far. Left in a 1v3, but it's a good bit of trade play coming out from Liquid to take round two, but I think the longer the tournament wears on, you will see that kind of 61% odd defender win rate slowly come down as teams get a stronger and stronger feel on how to deal with things, right? I'm not at all saying that it's now easy to attack suddenly because we're in a later stage of the tournament. It's more that teams that are good and have got an eye on the ball have figured out, okay, actually there is a way to beat it, and often it's bringing along 12 flashes, it's bringing along Ying, it's going fast as we saw from Wolves, and as we're now seeing from Liquid, we're 30 seconds into the round, and we already have players hitting sight for NJR! On the support once again, he's absolutely slaying them here. And in comes the backstab, Bolo off to the side, Pamba with the close. Liquid, they go nice and fast, but DZ have got a response. It's okay if things look a little bit chaotic on the attack because you only really need a couple of rounds and you're attacking half to have a strong defensive half coming off the back of it. So you know what? It's high risk gameplay. It's very fun to watch if you like watching teams just try and flood in and win gunfights because that's often what it turns into. But the two rounds on the board, they may have already got enough out of this half. Here we go, though, with round four into that second quarter, Tim. Going to be a gym and bedroom defense. And once again, the Ying is back. Going to have that wall open really quickly as well. 40 seconds in, and that is Jacuzzi Breach. Dunn Palu is off and away to more than likely Breach Construction, I would expect. Um, he's going to have the uh, Ace of Resets that's doing the CCTV wall for him. So we're going to see um, that player just scarpering, I think. It's going to be Bolo who tries to move around. Pamba picking up a big Nitro, but Bolo does get caught on his rotation. That's a big nest double as he goes in and just starts carving some space at the top of Red Stairs. Great attacker to catch, though. I mentioned the Ying a few times now and how powerful it's going to be throughout this series. Bolt's being taken down so early. Just remove some of that space creation that you get with the Ying. Drop a Candela in a room. Watch everyone except a Warden run for cover. Still, three players left on side for Dark Zero, despite being against four Liquid players here. They've got a C4 still in back pocket, a couple of impacts to play behind, and, of course, their lives to make good use of here. On the attacking side, not tons to bring to the party in terms of utility. You've got three flashes in the back pocket, a Palu, and that's really all that you can afford to lean on. They've got breaches opened up, they've got things they need, but moving forward from here, I think you're going to see a bit of a painful slow end to the round. 
Yeah, and you've got that low health for Nest at the minute. He's got two nades in pocket, which, you know, after the nade changes, it takes two seconds after the bounce. That's the detonation time. You can't cook them anymore. But what they are used more for now is moving players out of position. You dump a nade in there, they have to move. So they don't want to lose that utility, but Canadian is able to take it away from them. And all of a sudden, we've got a swing in manpower. It goes from four versus three to three versus two as Dark Zero managed to pick up a couple of kills. Lagonis, he's looking to move his way in. Could be a little bit of a backstab here, but I think Nath is just aware he's looking out in that direction. Lagonis signals his presence with a couple of shots. This is going to take a hero play from Liquid. Look how close the three players of DZ are. They are literally all sat on top of each other. You can see the outlines on your screen now. Really stacked up and looking for this main stairs fight, and understandably so, because Lagonis is now the last player left to try and push through this spot. I mentioned it might be quite a slow, painful grind out to the end of this round, and that's exactly what we've been given. He sees the leg flicks coming around the corner, but nothing to shoot. NGR puts slightly low, but DZ don't really need to engage this one. Time is on their side. NJR with the close. Yeah, the last time they had the Ying, that's now gone. Bolo's on the Frost, which is quite interesting. Expecting a Monty to come running at them again. But the critical change is Pamba moving on to the Wamai. I mentioned that last time around that they had nothing to stop Volps getting in and just burning them, uh, burning them alive up there. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened to Bolo. So I like that there's that adaptation coming in here to deal with that. However, you've now got Ying and the Capital to face off against. So you're going to get smashed in the face by a ton of YouTube that forces you to move one way or the other, but it feels like they could have got a lot of the right tools to make this play happen. And really, this round should move a little bit quicker than the dependency on the Monty that we saw last time they played this site. Yeah, I think Liquid uh, recognising that maybe they just run it a little bit close to the wire in terms of time, and that it was uh, reasonably easy for Dark Zero to deal with that push. They've pretty much rotated now after opening up that breach. That's going to be there for Phantom Pressure, but they are going to be pushing from the gym and bedroom side. Nesk is going in on the Ying, but it's Pamba once again. Second entry in a row. This mm. time he takes down Volps, and again, some key utility. Pamba manages it twice in a row, Des. It's Ying last round, it's Capitao this round. I'm really perplexed as to how he's been caught out as well. He was playing around Garage. It was Pamba down on the ground floor around the motorbike that got the kill onto him. Feels like I'm playing Cluedo there, Tim. He was playing dancing around the motorbike inside a Garage, and that's where he got the kill onto Volps. If Volps is exposing himself to the Garage door so early on, why? The rest of your team are all pushing in construction side. Your job is to sit, wait, maybe drone them in. Just, just be ready for when your team needs you. So getting picked off so early here, playing a crucial operator yet again. It was Ying last time, it's Capital. This one, that removes half of their serious execution threat. Four versus four, then as Paolo manages to pick up Pamba in, I can't even call it a trade, it was that late, but he's going to uh, just be able to push forward a little bit. Nesk is holding this angle in towards the top of Red Stairs. Liquid, 58 seconds left to go. That's plenty of time for them. Resets manages to join the attack inside of construction there, so there is uh, no Selmers in his pocket now that he's got the construction wall open, so there will be no further hard breaching coming from him. Uh, anything else would mm. be on Lagonis' shoulders, but they should have have everything that they need here and Candelas. in go the Candelas. Nesk is going to start this push. Do they know about NJR? He can't move at the moment. Oh. Nesk goes all oh, the way Nate. through sight, but Nath manages to cut him down. Just beamed him despite being flashed out as well. It was a great Candela coming in. Now resets makes the cross. They've got no idea that NJR is tucked in close. Lagonis comes in, gets it down, but it's still two for him and Palu to clean up. And Palu talking about cleaning up. It's a wrecking ball on the downstairs. Nath with the clean up down to a 1v2. Lagonis had just headed out sight there and he was kind of waiting for Palu to get there uh, but it never happened. Lagonis now needing to find kills. He's challenged from both sides. Bolo is the one to pick up the kill from the garage catwalk and Liquid again just struggling to get that execute to create that space. And again it's hindsight is 2020. It's one of those things but fundamentally they hold on and what uh, 20 seconds in man 20 seconds into the round and Palo has been beamed something else we saw back in Wolves W7M was early spawn peak attempts coming out of either side because they knew the game was going to move fast so if you can catch someone off guard when they haven't done their drone work this kind of thing can transpire and let's not forget Tim that Ash in this meta is the counter to Mira that now means again another crucial bit of utility will still be online for the defenders with no response from the attacking team that's it you've now got to start trying to play with those Hibana pellets maybe to take the mirror windows down if you want them down and this just so easily shot off especially on a site like Clubhouse um, He's got Church and Arsenal it, really. there's always generally going to be an angle onto them to be able to take them down so like you say the mirrors likely survive through the round and what a 
another great start. Three rounds in a row now that Dark Zero have been able to pick up the entry. And it just means that Liquid are constantly playing this 4v5. This time it hasn't been a huge loss of utility. That's one thing for them other than, as you say, the Volps. mirror problem. But Volps, he's going to be trying to work quietly. Not always the easiest thing on the Blitz, but he's going to try and sneak his way down Dirt Tunnel and see if he can maybe just uh, throw a little bit of chaos into the mix. Well, we've mentioned a few times throughout this half, Volps has been the first to fall, carrying crucial bits of utility. And you'd argue maybe the Blitz is also very critical in this round, but one, a little bit safer. And two, you can see how passive he's being. He's waiting for his team to say, now is the time to go. I imagine you'll see some form of utility dump, mainly the nades, the flashes, and the frags coming out, like you're starting to see now. And that's when he'll strike. But he's been caught completely out by a Canadian, and that is this round shut down already, unless... Nesk can go huge. Yeah, Canadian had his number there. He was just led prone Ready. inside of dirt, waiting a minute and a half for his moment, and he got it. He was the main character in that tunnel. Now then, Nesk is going to be pushing down, sending those nades in, trying to move players around. But the mirror window, you picked up on it at the beginning, Des. It just provided NJR such an easy kill onto Nesk there to shut it down. Final kills come in, and that's going to be Dark Zero taking a fourth round in a row. And that leaves us 4-2 on their defensive half. More of probably what we expect. Expected. Pamba going to be hitting the stock hatch now, just looking for that angle down to blue generators. Knows that there will be a presence down there. We see the impact near go in, likely to just burn out that were my magnet, which it will do. And then we'll give access potentially um, for the Capito to send in any further utility. And as suggested, Bolo and Pamba are working together. Bolo likely to try and use that smoke utility from the Capito. Nerf just having to push into the smoke a little bit will continue to be delayed. And I did mention time earlier of the Dark Zero. It's coming down to the 15 second mark and they are only now looking to push sides. Yeah, you've got to make use of something here. You've got to get something done. It's two smokes still in back pocket. They're not even going to get to use the glass the way they want. It's kind of a drop and hope for the best, but straight into one of those FNAP mines. They're planting through it as well and still they can see absolutely nothing. Talk about blind hope coming out from NJR. He'll be sticking it through, but getting pushed in. Liquid get the close down. Tim, that was a 20 second meta round. Quite literally at 20 seconds, DZ just realised Ah, crap. We're going to have to drop and just try and make this work, despite all the utility still stacked on site. Um, but nothing too severe. Black Eye cams, of course, um, being brought along regularly for the defenders with Valkyrie available. We're going to have the breach opened up there. And that is step one um, in trying to push across to the gym and bedroom site. That's going to allow access into CCTV. It means that Dark Zero can get a little bit of pressure then onto the balcony side, start using those windows yeah, because don't need to worry about being peaked. Perfect. He goes Pamba in behind the Candela. Fantastic use to get that entry onto Nest and start carving that space. Palu is in big danger as well. Caught out from that utility. Full flashed and taken down. Three versus five. This is a great attack from Dark Zero. But resets. He gives them a little bit of hope here. Liquid Volps. in the middle of the round. And Volps on the flank manages to find Bolo. Three versus two after a flurry of kills. I literally called at 30 seconds beforehand. Two AMPs committed on the roof above the ward and they drop a Candela in and they flood in towards red. And the thing is, Liquid are leaning so heavily into Ness being able to hold top red. They've got a shield committed to that hold for that exact reason that he can deny the breach. But when he can't turn his gadget on and his full white screened, well, you know exactly what happens next. The Floria kills come through. They get rid of two. Volts tried to make a backstab from underneath happen, but simply... Dark Zero were too ready. Great start to the attack for them. And Tim, they've still got a whole minute to work with. Yes, they haven't got the Ying on side anymore, but with two players on site now, and that's all you got to play behind, those C4s, for example, this is winnable. I only worry about where the Goyo canisters are going to be, because that could really slow this clock down to zero. Yeah, I mean, Dark Zero making a smart choice there. NJR getting open, over, opening that jacuzzi wall. We saw that Lagonis was just standing there. He was waiting to take his fights, and for my money, Lagonis is one of the best site players inside a siege if you let him pick his position if you let him pick his fights he will close out around like this and so by opening that it creates that phantom pressure it moves him around and all of a sudden liquid can't be as comfortable but there go the goyo canisters that you mentioned and it's on the right window oh, resets man. has just made it so difficult for dark zero to do anything 10 seconds left to go and liquid they just need to try and keep themselves out of gunfights for now but nif he goes in through the master bedroom window starts getting the diffuser down the cover was essential. NJR Beautiful. with one, Canadian with two, and Dark Zero find themselves 5-3 up after their first successful attack.
The beauty of it is, at this competition, the only two teams that Dark Zero and Liquid have lost Clubhouse to has been the reigning world champions and the reigning major champions, G2 and W7M. So even with these map picks, I don't feel like either team is like a huge disadvantage when you look at it. I think with with Nighthaven lads being second, I honestly thought that would be the decider. Decider, It's quite a low prep map for both teams. I thought Shally would be what DZ opted to go with. So that might have surprised us a little bit here. And I think we could be in for a really exciting map too. But I'm with you. DZ win here. I'm expecting a 2-0. I'm loving watching this DZ team as well. The, you know, the, the performance has been so exciting so far. Five entries in a row now. Liquid just unable to get themselves that bit of a, you know, that bit of a boost of a start by picking up that first kill. And you feel like maybe Maybe that could be the difference for them in a round or two. But Dark Zero just absolutely taking it to them. Any bit of space that they are offered, Dark Zero will go in and take. They're using the utility well, pushing in behind the Candelas. Fantastically effective over the last couple of rounds. And now they've got those main stairs locked down. The track stingers are going to prevent any flank there. And Bolo can start working his way across to put a bit of pressure on construction. Big one really again is NJR. I mentioned him earlier on. Very highly rated at this competition. Second, I believe, overall in terms of rating. And this game, Damn really great making, a, game. making a play for first as well at 12 and 4. It's been absolutely unbelievable. I mean, really, a rounded team performance. You look up and down that Dark Zero side. Sure, Troy's looking a little bit quiet, but everyone else has been really getting involved in the game. Admittedly, players like Bolo have been thrown to the walls at points, sat inside a catwalk, but otherwise it has been a team effort, and that is what's beautiful to see. Now, this one's looking like a bit of a slow round once again. We're coming down to the last 50, and no one has died. A couple of shots back and forth, but that is really about it. And I'm looking now when the execute comes in, and Pamba's starting to shuck in those Candelas. They were going to be the defining factor of this round. Now, who moves? Bolo goes in, manages to get the kill onto Volks. NJR finds Nesk on the catwalk. Pamba, one of his own. This could be flawless if Liquid don't stand up and do something here. Lagonis is trying to hold onto the red stairs. Full flashed. It's not oh, looking good the as the diffuser goes down. He does manage to find a kill through the flash, but it will be only one as Canadian closes him down with a trade. Palu cut down underneath and Dark Zero with another fantastic attack. Looking absolutely electrifying on Clubhouse at the minute. Go 6-3 ahead. Overall out of nine rounds, I know I keep going on about the entry, but Dark Zero are seven and two overall um, with six in a row. And they just really are making the most of that man advantage they're able to use. Now, last time around, they didn't win this site. Liquid able to go back to Church and Arsenal. Um, and my, my one criticism really of Dark Zero's attack is they didn't leave themselves enough time at the end of the round. Liquid didn't play out anywhere in the map. Um, and I, Dark Zero could have got in there quicker and started doing that work. It's the same situation again liquid are all down in the basement i'd like to see dark zero right now starting to move in they get in hatches this is better this is what we wanted to see in round one for dark zero at this point tim with them rolling while well, running away with this half there's no massive surprise admittedly they're one of only three teams in the whole competition with an attacking win rate above 50 percent the other two being surprisingly or unsurprisingly g2 and sonics so at this point, you would expect them to come in and have a good half. It's exactly what we're seeing. Once again, I'm looking out for Canadians' EMPs here and looking out for where Palu is. They have just punished these setups, making use of those EMPs so many times over and not just to get things opened up. So keep an eye on that. They'll be a big key to side in fact on whether or not Palu can slow them down or not. And I love the, you know, you mentioned the use of the EMPs. I love the vertical use of them. It's not something that we see too often. You know, you often think about throwing them in there horizontally, just trying to get them into the right place. But it can be really smart to just dump them on the floor up above the target. It will do the same job. So Dark Zero not uh, sparing the... Not sparing the damage at the minute as Volks manages to take a little bit on the Fenrir. Palu is maybe going to be feeling the effects. No, the glass is still in effect. Volks manages to find Nath. Can Palu pick one up on the door? Absolutely. Lagonis and Ness, they get ones and it's five versus two now as Liquid holding on nicely. It's a very small thing, but you saw the step back from Palu to make sure those glasses were available when the blue hit came on through. I thought we might see a bait and switch like Liquid in Florida and they're attacking half, but not to be in this round. DZ were hell-bent on forcing blue. 
and Liquid have absolutely destroyed them on that push on through. Six and four. Also considering the defending human bedroom, it is also a room you, room you can afford to lose. So it's much more about trying to slow things down on the other side. Darks are even going to start things out in the west here. Not worry too much about what's going on out towards Cash and CC. Yeah, this wasn't the focus for Dark Zero last time. If you remember when they attacked this site, I commented, um, you know, how with a minute to go, NJR had rotated over and opened Jacuzzi to prevent Logonis playing next. in that position. This time they've opened it at the very beginning of the round. Um, I like to see it. It just creates that little bit of discomfort throughout the entire round. Um, I was going to suggest this may be the technique of dealing with the mirror window as well. Go for the upside down repel, get the extra thermic on. It's going to take the whole lot out. It is a round where they haven't brought along the EMPs that I was mentioning before. Just a couple of micros in the back pocket for Canadian to help them get the walls opened up. So Nesk in a power position, able to do some damage on the Warden as long as he's not bothered. Last time round, he got cleaned out of here very quickly. There best be a better plan in mind for Dark Zero than if that's not available. Maybe looking in towards the Grim and the Lion combo here to really slow things down. But here comes, um, I mean, you saw the red icon, mate. So that's a good way to get rid of the Warden. It's just made him. It's as easy as that. A couple of kills by through out here on the east side. And that honestly might have just cost Liquid the map tip. I was just going to say it's essential that Liquid hold on to cash and construction for as long as possible. They've just they've dedicated so much utility and manpower in there and it's all come to nothing within the first half of the round. Dark Zero dealing with this I'm fantastically alone. well. It just seems like Dark Zero on Clubhouse have got a plan A, B, C, D. They just keep going on. No matter what is placed in front of them, they've got a way around it. Lagones, Volps, two versus five and they are going to have to fight for dear life here to try and hold on and keep Liquid fighting in this one against what has been Attackers so far a pretty back. scary dark zero team recovered the bomb well who would have thought absolutely stomping and rocking things on the attacking half of this map looks like dark zero should get a clean sweep out here only two left to five versus two and 30 seconds to play with it's enough time to get things closed out especially how composed dark zero have been in round ending scenarios and sure enough the bees are in the bullets are in everything is in and paul lagoon this is left one versus five this should be a DZ map one, Tim. I would have expected so. Very little that Lagonis can do in this position. He's trying to find his shots, but it will be a flawless round to match an almost flawless performance from Dark Zero on map one. What a finish from them. Absolutely dismantling Clubhouse, showing us how to attack it once and for all. And they will be heading into map two with a win under their belt. Not an easy one for them to take. They got a couple of rounds on the board to start with, but then Dark Zero just stretched their legs and ran away with things. And the other thing to remember here about this Dark Zero team is they come into the SI with two new players. Bolo obviously returning to competitive play, Nath moving across, and that's a system that needs to be built. And they're doing it fantastically well. They're doing it quickly, but the longer that they go through this tournament, they will only become more, more and more powerful. I think we've only cast Nighthaven once so far at this competition. It was a bit of a scrappy game. I believe it was GK versus someone. It was very early on. I can't remember entirely, but this game should be pretty crazy between these two, given the caliber of competition that we now find ourselves in. So Liquid have dealt with Ying. That was one of the big problems that they had. Now, unfortunately for Liquid, they were unable to ban NJR, um, who was another big problem that they had in the last matchup. So the question now is how are Liquid going to deal with the impact that NJR was able to have on the game last time around, particularly on the defence. Obviously, that's going to be something that will come for them to deal with in the second half. But for now, Dark Zero on the attack. I'm looking for more of this great problem solving that they showed us back on that first map of Clubhouse. It didn't matter which operator was in which position. They were able to find answers. Wrapping it on the inside there, just in case there was any utility stacked upon the walls around it, but there was not. Quite a light round, I guess, overall from Liquid in terms of defensive setup. Like, there's no FNATs to deal with, for example. Of course, with the Asami being banned away, no key barriers to work your way through. No tuba out to pair up with the Kaid. So, overall, I won't be too nervous about it. The real big defining thing for me in this round is going to be Volts on that Oryx, though. Really looking for him to get active and stay busy around the map. Of course, he's got the detectors as well to give a little bit of extra defensive information for that side. 
they really need this wall to be opened up here as well. We're going to find the mirror window taken out and shot away. So he's got to be very careful here about what parts himself he exposes. Just enough of the square through the middle, but I don't think he fully finishes the opening. The C4 comes through and that will stay closed. How are you going to deal with NJ? Yeah. Oh, well, you're going to hit him with a C4 and you're going to take him out of the round. As you say, breach stays closed and this is not the start that Dark Zero wanted on the attack here. Liquid are looking pretty comfortable inside a site at the minute. They've got their angles, they've got 40 seconds left to burn, and they're at this point just willing to let Dark Zero have to play in through them. It's going to be through doors, through windows, through barricades. What a push from Canadian, though. Straight into Warehouse, finds Nestled prone, Pamba finds Ooh. one, and somehow Dark Zero have turned the round on its head, Des. Liquid, they had it all in the hands, they had the entry, they had the positions, but no, in a matter of seconds, Dark Zero have gone through them like a knife through butter. Done everything they need to. Where's the diffuser, though? It's with Canadian. He's got that picked up now, so I imagine looking to get in on the west side. Bolts, he's staring out towards Pamba, but that time's going to run down. They've got to find the man. Do they know where he is? Plant's going down here. Bolts expecting the move, but it's not to come. Seeds one. He's got to push on fourth, though. No, the swing comes in from Naif. They weren't quite sure where the last man was, and he could have got away with murder, but Dark Zero, hold on. I mean, to begin with, it's going to be that case of working through the top floor. That's why having the Jackal on side here, I think, is really valuable. Arguably, Naif as well, playing on the Zero. Yes, you bring along the secondary uh, Harbridge gadgets, the can openers, same as Pamba. But also, of course, have those Sam cams. Get them in the map, you can see a lot of information. You can flip which side of a wall or floor they're looking at as well. So very valuable for getting information down into that basement to at least offset the information that is offered by the Valkyrie, who equally is countered by Bolo on the IQ. So all that back and forth in terms of the information game. Nurse just going to be holding a long angle there, and Liquid attempting him over and over again, but he just can't quite find his shots. However, NJR will do. I picked him up at the start of this game. He was kept quiet by a Nitro in the last one, but this time comes back seeking his revenge and gets the entry onto Ness. I've got to give it to Dark Zero as well. Drone use has been great. Bearing in mind, they're trying to clear three floors here. They've still got two... Well, they've only had two drones go down in the round. Seven out on field, one still in back pocket. Yep. They're using the information incredibly well and moving forward as a team. One player drone steps on forward, then someone else is the same to a room forward. It's kind of like this cover and move between them that means they can advance through the entirety of the map. Yes, a little bit upset here, I guess, by Nath being down. Certainly not out just yet, but they know where Paolo is and straight away, NJR is there yet again to find his second kill of the round and Liquid can barely find a kill to him, let alone a round. That's it, they've just not turned up to the races here on Night Haven Labs so far. They're really going to have their work cut out for them if they don't get things moving soon. Two versus five, 20 seconds, so time is a factor for Dark Zero here. They are not yet on site oh. and in a position to put the diffuser down and resets is having none of the vertical pressure. He looks above and manages to get the reverse angle. Here comes resets with another two. It's going to have to be an ace though if he wants to close this out, but the diffuser's down. Five seconds, Ooh. he finds another. He might just do this. There is only a matter of milliseconds, and somehow Resets holds on. He gets a 4K, and he drags Liquid back into this one. So we'll see if Liquid can hold on. I imagine it's going to be similar to previous rounds, where it's a case of starting up on this top floor, at least trying to slow Dark Zero down and not giving them full vertical control before we then start looking at the execute coming in itself. Lagonis already shown as prowess with the Nitro, hitting NJR for the entry in the first round. Has it in hand now. He's thinking about getting it through that window if Bolo steps out just a little bit too much. Needs to be careful. Doesn't want to get caught by those explosives. And Liquid not wanting to overpeak this, not wanting to overaggress. We just almost have a little coming together there. Oh, they continue knew. pushing, but get too aggressive as Bolo is able to fight fire with fire and takes down Bolt. Oh! He's found a freebie as well from the roof. Beautiful angle. It was a great idea from Liquid. They had a player Better trying to trick up. upstairs. Two players holding supplies. The Bolo couldn't get it open. And despite two Bobby players back. swinging on them, he still manages to get the floor blocked out. So the resets can't sit there. And they get the wall open into a second kill. And now into a third coming out. NGR hitting a two in the round. You know, admittedly, talk about composure in the face of fire for Bolo. That could have gone horribly wrong. But holds on for his team and they get what they need. A 5v2 and they are running away with this map. 
He's earned a little ball or spin or two for that one, I think. Uh, <laughs> just really gets himself into the game, like you say. For me, that just demonstrates Dark Zero's sort of depth of knowledge on this map. A beautiful angle from rooftop through IT floor to get that kill onto Lagonis. And it's just showing them they've nowhere safe. But Nest, he oh. just misses his opportunity there. Bolo able to now turn and fight. And he's up against a weaker gun. And he's able to take advantage. One versus four. It's all up to Palu. He's been quiet so far on the hole today. And they're going to need something big from him now. And it is looking unlikely. 35 seconds left to go. And Bolo, as amongst everything else he's done in this round, gets that diffuser down. Got a tight step up and the captain falls down. Take his space and get it done. A couple of kills for him, a couple for NGR, another very, very strong round. And I really think there it didn't matter what was going on with Nesk. He was a little bit trapped and you have Pamba rounding on the side in the IQ. So even if he wins the one versus one, he gets traded half a second later. Again, beautiful team play from Dark Zero. They are constantly going into situations with superior numbers, with superior angles and picking Liquid off. And I can imagine how frustrated the Brazilian side must be feeling right now. Every time they get close to a gunfight, DZ are just so tightly tucked in cover that you don't give them a single second to even sniff at a headshot. That's rough, you know. There's one thing being like overwhelmed strategically when you're also losing practically every gunfight you're coming into. It really doesn't feel good for these boys at all. Like, in what world Apollo and Nesk one and six as a combo in a game like this? That's it. They, they really need their uh, their moments to, to step up. And we know they've got the ability to do it. Um, and fingers crossed for the Liquid fans, at least, that they're going to show us that and that we will see it happen. NJR is going to get that IT wall open. That was something that Dark Zero struggled to get done last time on this mm. site. They had to rely on gunfights, whereas this time it's going a little bit more to plan for them. They had Maverick and the Thermite last time around. They dropped away the Maverick and instead got the Thatcher on side. Just said, if you forget about dancing around this electric and all that, that kind of crap. Instead, let's try and look to get things opened up. Admittedly, the electric wasn't here in this round. They could have dropped it away. But either way, they still get the benefit of it. You've got the exothermics. Nice big hole being opened up. And then get things moving. Nesk, is this going to be zero and four? Yes, it is. Really, you feel, should have found Canadian there because he had the jump on him, but just couldn't hit that critical shot needed. Again, Canadian just staying patient there, knowing the challenge was coming, but just sort of allowed Nesk to pre-fire his bullets away before he stepped in. Really well played from Nesk. Out comes the EMP that's going to allow Bolo to open this long angle with the Selmers and we saw him take advantage of this last time. NJR, right place, right time to cut down Volps. Palu takes damage. Dark Zero are just swarming oh. over them at the minute, Des. The going is once again. The man left in the hot spot. This time he's fallen. Resets. Can he pull off another 4K to bring things square? The answer feels like no. As the last smoke canister comes out, Nafe with a backstab coming through as well. Yeah, I've spoken to a few teams here recently and said, I remember like thinking about W7M back in the old days. It felt like you were playing 10 versus 5. They were just coming out of walls and you were like, where can I breathe? And that's what it must feel like being liquid in this game because every time it feels like a player has got an opening, oh, I've got a kill, and they didn't expect it. Next thing you know, there's two players that have got a crossfire on you. Someone else is flanging in behind you, yet they've still got full control of the site. It just feels so... <sighs> so suppressive to play against these guys and look at barely have a room to breathe and understandably so what are dark zero going to look to do here they're likely going to try to take top floor control if you can get inside a meeting open up a lot of meeting the meeting corridor you can get a lot of the vertical angles onto positions like the one that we see lagonis playing at the minute for example makes it very difficult for the defenders to stay inside of sight um, so i think they'll be looking for that bit of vertical control nerfs taking a little bit of damage along the way as well and then they can think about maybe getting reception, breaching the wall, and getting themselves on and in for a plant. Really looking towards that ram again that we saw picked up in one round. Very close to us finding his man. And Joe was just doing too much gardening. He was taking the plant out. I thought they might want to get in the bomb and get the ram opened up, but they said no, they just said pull the trigger and let's get inside the side, make it happen. Liquid at least have kept things slowly away. Lots of utility being dumped in here to try and get control. Bolo's going to be able to stick it. One comes in for Pamba as well. They will be able to finish this off, and even with the flank coming in from the backside, there is still a response elsewhere. Parley left in a one versus two, and this site is so hard to retake. They've got the round. 
Bolo is playing cat and mouse inside of sight, and Nafe is just picking up scouts for free on the window. you got to feel for Liquid at the minute. There is just so little that they can do to stop this Dark Zero side. They try switching sights, and normally, um, you know, yes, we would expect, as I said, to see that vertical play coming in from Dark Zero, but they say, you know what, forget it. There's an opportunity. Let's get inside a kitchen. Yeah, from Dark Zero's perspective, again, it's that problem solving. It's that, right, OK, they've got a top floor presence. Can we maybe go without doing that? Can we just win a couple of gunfights and brute force in? Yes, we can. And like I said, as a team, they look like they're having fun together. They look like they're enjoying playing. And as we know from across the years, those are the truly dangerous teams. I said it the other day as well, like Nathan Bolo have got such like a bromance on the go. Like every time I see him at like lunch or whatever, they're having such a laugh together. They'll be the next yeah. me and you, Dave. <laughs> How do they build that synergy? The swing's earlier sometimes. It comes down to that. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm just excited to see how things keep on developing for them. And I said earlier on, it's like a bit of a joke, like every time a team's won this one between these two teams, they've gone on to a grand final. But I think even Fresh said, just before we came into the competition, he's like, I could see DZ being a dark horse and making a good run here with this lineup. You're starting to see that possibility become very, very unlocked the longer this tournament has gone on. There'll always be that big question, can they overcome big teams like Sonics, like G2? They've already lost 2-0 to G2, admittedly 2-7-5 maps, but... Can they get the full job done? We'll find out at another point. Nesk again, domed. Imagine a world, Tim, where Nesk is 0-6 and six against Dark Zero. That's a line that if you said to me a year ago, I'd be like, nah, that, when would that ever happen? Turns out it's happening here, Tim. They're getting absolutely domed. Volt's trying his best to get something done, but Nath, you ain't going to give that one away. It just feels for Team Liquid like they're trying to kind of, you know, with that Volt's run out there, it's like, look, we know we've just got to try and throw anything at the wall and see what sticks here. Um, and there's just nothing that they can do at the minute. They are the passengers. They're along for the ride. And Dark Z, Dark Zero are the ones that are in charge of the controls right now of this roller coaster. And they are just taking Liquid for an absolute thrill ride at the minute. They've put them in a spin cycle 17 as they are 4 1 up. 4-1 in the server and looking like it's going to be a 5-1 half. Bolo closes it out and Dark Zero just on fire. It's like Bolo dropped out of that Paul animation there to get that final kill as well. But You're obsessed now... with that animation, aren't you? you cool. love it. I just think it's cool. It's cute. I liked it. That's now 18-2, and two, though, between Nath and Bolo. They are dominating Liquid on this map in particular. It is, yeah. It, there are two hearts to a game of Siege. And I know Liquid on the last map, we praised their first two attacks coming out of it. And then Dark Zero really got with the program and started finding an answer. And my concern is, again, come back to what we saw on the analyst desk. Come back to what we were speaking about in that previous map. The timing for Liquid has just been a few seconds off in most of their yeah. attacking situations. And Dark Zero know how to punish you for that. So I just think unless Liquid admittedly have to get battered 5-1 in the first half, I imagine the comms are low, morale's feeling a little bit low at the moment. For them to come out here and have like a watertight attacking half, I just don't see it happening. Canadian offering a top floor presence at the minute. Uh, Ball and Nafe on the mid floor, I think. And yep, correct. And then NJR down in side of sight. So Canadian is going to be holding on for as long as possible. Just trying to burn as much time as he can do here. Um, Volps is going to take an awful lot of damage from him up above. And it just looks like Liquid aren't aware of his presence up here. And Canadian's just taking full advantage of that. Yeah, you're going to let me sit up around IT and server? No problem. I'm just going to shoot you from above then. I've got a shot here. And they've let two players slip the net now and get back down towards site, including yeah, almost losing vaults. But both Nath and Bolo were out on the roam and managed to escape. Yeah, even down the same staircase as well is the most bonkers part because you'd imagine Liquid would have closed that net and caught someone on the way through. But getting shot from above, letting players slip back down to site without any real bother or challenge. It just looks slow and like Dark Zero are sprinting while Liquid is still walking. And the raid boss that is NJR on the defence gets his account open again with the first kill of Dark Zero's defending half. Manages to pick one up onto Volt, um, finishing off the work that Canadian started. And Liquid, for me, Des, they look a little bit lost at sea here. They're not really sure. They've got players above them still that haven't been dealt with that are going to hit them on the flank. Time is running out. They're just having to start pushing towards side.
They're trying to make this work on the push on forward, and fair enough, they managed to get rid of Bolo. Parlo's a little bit behind the time, though, and he's hitting on the flank as well. No one there to cover it. This is what happens when you don't full clear the map. You will get backstabbed, and now their backstab is not going to be online. Parlo's gone. A four versus three, they'll at least get away with it. But Dark Zero, look above you. You've got Canadian working his way down the back, and there he is getting one for himself. A 4v2, and NJR is just showing him a little bit of shoulder, a little bit of thigh, but not enough to complete the picture here. Two left standing, Lagonis falls. Canadian and Nave complete the backstab. And Tim, Pamba and Canadian have got a buff them there. They've taken lost ground or retaken lost ground. Liquid cannot buy around right now. Absolutely great. Absolutely great from Dark Zero there. Beautiful. Keep it just chef's kiss. The one thing I will be coming back to, you know, Volt was the entry death again here too. We spoke about this a lot back on club, but he's playing critical operators for the attack. It was it was Ying, it was Capital, it was things like that on the last map. Hang on. Yeah, if you're going on the entry and often being caught out like this, and you know, you're having to entry whilst playing a key operator, you should be screaming, guys, I need drones, guys, I need information, guys, what the hell is going on? And I mentioned coming off the back of a 5-1 half, very fair chance that communication morale is going to be low at this point, but they just keep on bleeding players in the silliest of ways, and, you know, fair play to Dark Zero for taking the opportunities when they're there, but Liquid should be doing so much better than what we're seeing in this game. You mentioned the entry days. Um, you know, yes, it was something we picked up on Clubhouse because they were, you know, losing so and much utility and manpower to it. Um, there goes Volps. I'm going to update quickly mentally. Um, so coming into this now, it is 14 and 5. What is Dark this? Zero are just running away with this. This is. This is just something else, right? Like, now. It's a constant 2v1 in every single gunfight you see. Like, the fact that you can run into connector there as Pamba and get the backstab along with the lesion is ludicrous. And there's nothing there to support them. Liquid look like five players playing their own game right now. That communication isn't there. They haven't cleared Romas, for example. They're getting shot in the back. Players are being left isolated. Just everything is going against them. And DZ are stomping. And that's not what we've seen from Liquid throughout this. It's important to, to note that. What we've seen is that it's increased over the last few rounds. They seem mentally beaten at this point, And it's just got worse and worse for them but yeah as I say stats wise over the two maps on entry DZ 14 and 5 that is huge so you are playing 14 rounds in a 5 versus 4 Nate like, managed to pick up Lagonis bottom um, of the stairs 1v1 then Nate turns around and goes to the top of stairs 1v1 exactly like, that. No you, you need to push together if you're liquid here Nesk finds himself inside a site just trying to do at this kill. point anything that he can do Dark Zero are playing this smart they've got players underneath they've got an opportunity to be able to deny from okay, there if the diffuser the should go down 50 seconds left to go Liquid desperately need a couple of kills. They've got control of this part of the map, but I think Nace below, has he got a C4? No, he does not, but does have a shotgun. Doesn't matter, can't get rid of him in this spot here. So they're going to have to retake behind. This 1v1, I was going to say, is crucial, but Palu wins it out. The dynamic duo, arguably one of the most storied in Siege history, have got to pull it off. One falls, Ness gets the down at least, but now he's got to fight an MGR. I never fancy a 1v1 against him. Dark Zero take a comfortable 2-0 against Team Liquid. NGR after a fantastic first First Mark comes out and has another belter on Night Haven Labs. Eight and three. He will pick up that final disable of the diffuser to close it out. And what a performance we have just seen out of Dark Zero across both maps. They will continue in the upper bracket with a victory over Team Liquid. And so much of that domination came on their attacking halves as well. Looking back at the previous map, yes, they were up four and two after their defense, but it was on the attack where they really shone and made themselves a big, I think, at least here, planting a flag in the ground and saying we are a team with a serious chance of maybe not even getting top four, but winning the whole thing with that kind of play. There are definitely Titans for them to overcome on that journey. G2 and Sonic spring to mind, but you've got to start looking at these boys as serious contenders right now. Thank you very much, gentlemen. And there it is, Dark Zero with North America victorious against Brazil. It's seeming like Brazil's chances are being slowed down, hampered. Some would say, welcome back to the desk. I'm Melis with me is Jesse and Bolo, the man. When does he play? When is he on the interview? It is right 
Now, Hello. How you good. We're feeling really good after that. You know, we did some we did some nice prep. I think in in group stages, you know, the G2 loss kind of woke us up a little bit. Before that, we haven't really fell to anybody in the group stages. So, you know, losing is learning. And I think we learned and we showed it today. And hopefully we continue to show it later today. Yeah, well, I mean, through this game, it felt like you guys didn't need to do a whole lot of learning from start to finish. It was feeling very, very good for you. There were those two rounds right at the start of Clubhouse where you guys did drop the ball a little bit. It maybe took you a little bit to get going. Was there anything that changed after those two rounds that kind of got you guys into it? I think, honestly, just the first two rounds were just like simply, you know, getting a feel for the team, you know, just first two rounds of the match, right? Sure. You know, it's like, it's a little warm up and then we started getting comfortable. We started, you know, getting a little bit loose and playing our game. And I think the results spoke for themselves. We've talked on the desk a lot about how Dark Zero's pushes have been um, very coordinated, very good looking with a lot of Ying and Grim and a lot of these disruption operators. Um, what's it like playing in that type of a style? What's it like when that's going on, the calling that's happening, um, setting up for that as a player? How does that work on your end? I mean, honestly, it's it's, it's pretty fun because it's like every person has a purpose, right? It's like, mm -hmm. you know, X holds Y angle, you know, X throws flash here, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's all just like a nice choreographed dance and I'm happy to be a part of it. Well, how different is this meta now playing with Dark Zero um, compared to the meta back when you won on TSM? Honestly, it's a little bit faster. It's a lot more about map control. Uh, and honestly, I'm really enjoying it. You know, previous my previous comp experience was, you know, the whole nades under. Uh -huh. Now there's a lot more power spots, a lot more emphasis on like the, you know, the Grim, the Ying, the Dokabi, everything. And it's, it's honestly a blast. It's honestly a blast playing in it. Okay, and I have a, a clip I'd like to walk you through. Um, it is a, an execute that you guys had on Nighthaven Labs. Just tell me what's going on, your thought process, and how this push goes for you. I mean, this is just, we kind of we kind of prepped for this. This was a uh, concoction as of last night. Okay. <laughs> so I think it went pretty well. It's just, we wanted to utilize, because we knew that we knew the warden was top mez, right? So mm -hmm. we just utilized the smokes, the flashes, and just took all the map control that we needed. It was a nice shot. We, Thank you, thank you. You watch this, watch this. You ready for this? Uh huh, uh huh. I was, I was hyped. Bam! Look at that. <laughs> you look at that. The perfect dog. Look at that. They can see it back there. Uh huh. I mean, it's just, it's just, you know, perfect execute against a team that wasn't really prepared for it. I think that's just the name of the game at the point. Love it. You made the warden look like, like a chum. To be very honest, between both maps, the timing on the EMPs and all was perfect. We talked about it on Clubhouse. We'll talk about it in a moment here on Night Haven. Bola, anything you'd like to say to all the fans out there? I'm sure there's a couple of them out there. I mean, man, it was a fun match. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And, you know, let's help, let's help the DZ run for the upper bracket continues. And hopefully you guys are there. Appreciate the support. Thank you.